just this second we found a rather nice in situ tile floor uh, at the back, so it's quite exciting. Area B initially was going to be one large excavation. However, after initial consultation, it was decided to split it into three smaller areas. Area B1, B2, and of course, B3. Right, so we've got the cloister here. The cloister of this abbey was always thought to have been quite small and square. Um, with the northwest corner of the cloister being where the Norman archway is cut through into the chancel over there. Now last year we got the south wall of our cloister and the inner cloister wall in a trench we had behind the spoil heap and we pushed the southern side of the cloister a lot further back which then made the cloister rectangular. We weren't desperately happy with that because we wanted it to be a square cloister and this year we have proved pretty much it is a square cloister, but about a third bigger than was previously thought. Within the cloister walkway down here, the floor surface had been robbed away at the dissolution. So again, we've taken the opportunity to, to go down to get to the natural geology in here and to see what was underneath our cloister. We were expecting to get in situ burials in here. No burials whatsoever. But is what we do have is an awful lot of disarticulated human bone. Just sort of bits and bobs really. We've had quite a few skull fragments, um, several bits of a leg, several bits of arm, all jumbled about, all higgledy-piggledy. And is what we think has happened in here is, because obviously the, the slope, you know, the ground slopes down to the river, cloisters you want them level, so they've brought a load of soil in from somewhere else to build the level up in here. And it looks like the soil that they brought in came from a cemetery in the vicinity because of the amount of human bone in it and the bone is in quite good condition so it's not been kicking about in sort of the grave soil for very long so um, a little bit unexpected but um, all adds to the story in here and from the middle section is where we had our Saxon dress pin from um, dated to between 700 and 900 AD and we know there's an abbey on the site in 827 AD when the original abbey was founded so our dress pin is slap bang in that period of our first abbey. So we've got our cloister running through here. Beautiful wall along the back here, which is the south wall of the cloister, but also then forms the north wall of the rooms we've got beyond here. But one thing I really wanted was medieval floor tiles, but medieval floor tiles in situ. And um, a little bit of a surprise, we got them over in here, about four inches below the level of the present field. In here now, we've got several different floor levels where they've sort of raised the floor in t at times and put new partition walls in. And um, we've got another wall that's running parallel with our main wall here. We're not quite sure what it's doing yet. Clearly an earlier phase to the abbey because the two walls can't work together. Down over here, you should be able to see there's a load of tiles and, and things set on edge, forming a hearth area. And it's what we think's happening down there is because that hearth cuts through the last medieval floor surface in there. So it's what we think we've got evidence of. Is it the dissolution? So I think basically the demolition boys have set themselves up a little fireplace down there. We found quite a lot of molten lead in association with it. So we basically think they're stripping the window lead, melting it down into blocks for easier transport. So we've got evidence in here, probably from the Saxon period with our dress pin from the middle, right through now to sort of the last dying days of the Abbey when it's being demolished at the dissolution. It may not look desperately exciting, but this trench has given us the evidence for our cloister being so much bigger. They did leave me, thankfully, is the lowest footings of where the arcade wall returns north. And just underneath Father Philip's house at the back here, there's a very much chewed about undercroft 
that's a um, part of the medieval abbey and is part of the west range of the abbey the vault of it is long gone it's got lovely victorian joists going across the top of it now but there's enough stonework in there to indicate that it is the remnants of, of, of the medieval undercroft for what part of the or part of the west range of the abbey so we're now well 100 percent confident that the cloister is a lot bigger here which then has implications possibly for the size of the abbey church because in the medieval period the size of the cloister and the size of the church were usually related with mathematical um, um, ratios we've got um, pretty much sort of finishing off in here but we've got our wall continuing through here which is the same wall as the one we've got over there stops just here and then turns south just down here we've got a doorway into this room from our cloister just over there so we've got a nice doorstep here we've got some in situ medieval floor tiles just down there just a few here not quite as many as over there but we don't want to be greedy and as why our wall has been stepped and cut away down here is um the good old Victorians thought what fun it would be to terrace the garden and put some garden steps in. So they've taken away part of our wall and then used the medieval stonework as the footings for their garden steps. Just in the corner down here of the, um, of the room, there was a little sort of hollow that had got a pot sat in it. Not quite a complete pot, but not far off. It's missing its top. And the pot itself looks like it dates to the dissolution. So quite why they buried a little pot in the corner of the room in the 1540s, we don't know. But um, one of those little mysteries.